Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome to First Park Baptist Church this morning, this holiday weekend, and it's a labor of love because we all labor and we all love our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we want to give thanks and praise for this day. I'm going to start with a passage of scripture, and I'll be reading from Philippians 4, uh, 4 through 9. I've heard this this morning, a pastor was preaching on this, and it sort of touched me. I'm not going to preach on it, but I'm just going to read it, and we uh, hope it touches you the way that it touched me this morning. It says, always be full of joy in the Lord. I say again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and think and thank him for what he's all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds everything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable, and right, and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learn and receive from me. Everything your heart, everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then God's peace will be with you. Amen. Amen. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we give you praise and thanks this morning. We ask your blessings upon this service. We thank you for all of those who are here this morning. We thank you for those who may be on their way. But most of all, we thank you for our viewing audience, whether you be on YouTube or uh, Facebook. We just praise you this morning. And for those of you who may be traveling, we ask that you would grant them traveling mercies. But most of all, dear Heavenly Father, we invoke your spirit this morning that you would dwell and tabernacle with us just for a little while so that we can praise you and thank you and just honor you and all of our praise to you this morning. We want to lift up your name. We just want to thank you for what you've done for us throughout this week. We thank you that you brought us through this, this um, Hurricane Ida that came through the Heavenly Father. I pray that everyone uh, uh, is good. Heavenly Father, I don't know if you had any damage to your house or your home, but I pray that your health is well, Heavenly Father. We just thank you for you just continuing your blessing and strengthening us and just watching over us day by day. So, dear Heavenly Father, we praise you, we thank you, and we lift up your name. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. We're going to go into our announcements this morning. Upcoming events, all meetings via Zoom at 7 p.m. The official board meeting will be Friday the 10th. All may attend. Please email Angela for the link. The deacons meeting is September the 13th, and the trustee meeting is September the 20th. Again, all meetings are via Zoom at 7 p.m. Get excited, First Park Baptist Church. The first youth assemble, next rehearsal will be determined. All young people from age five to 17 are welcome to join. You can see Brother Mario for any other details over there. And I'm sure he'll be able to uh, help you out. We encourage all our young people, ages five to 17, parents see Mario Sr. 
Worship team rehearsal has resumed. Get excited. Please keep an eye out for the next rehearsal date and time. Once again, you can see Brother Mario over there tickling the ivories. He'll give you more information. Uh, before I go to that, I thought it was going to be an announcement. It may come later, and then I'll just skip it. But um, we are going to be having, uh, we've been invited to participate in the Ducre School on the 25th. Uh, the worship team will be uh, bringing songs of praise and lifting up the name of Jesus. And that's on the 25th. I'm not sure of a time. You got six o'clock. The time is six o'clock at the Ducre School. Uh, all our worship team will be bringing uh, our songs of joy and praise to the Lord. So we encourage you, the congregation, not only to support us, but to support the Decrave School. Uh, church picnic is September the 18th. Come one, come all. Men will provide the meats and the drinks. Ladies, please, please bring aside this. Post your contributions on group meat so that there are not duplicates. Daily prayer is at six o'clock every day. Join and experience more every evening except holidays. So there won't be a prayer tomorrow, but there's prayer this evening at six o'clock. You can dial 848-220-3300. The access code is 152-3848-POUND. Got a praise report, prayer request, something to celebrate. Don't keep it to yourself. Email the church office uh, so that we can pray, rejoice, and celebrate with you. Now it's time for praise and worship. The Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank God for being here this morning. After last night sleeping and rising this morning, we, we just praise God for being here. Glad to see all your beautiful faces, smiles, and even after this storm that we had this, this week, I'm so happy that everybody is all right. Nobody here is dead, and we're all doing okay. Uh, we pray for those families who have lost someone during this time is so tragic, but we know that God is still in control through it all. And, and it's in those times where I realize how close I want to be to God. I want to be near him all the time. In fact, he said in his word that he, he would never leave us and he would never forsake us. So just to be close to you, just to be close to you, just to be close to you is my desire. Just to be close to you, just to be close to you, just to be close to you is my desire, just to be close to you, just to be Just to be close to you, yeah, yeah, is my desire. Come on, if you know the word, say. Just to be close to you. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Just to be close to you. Yeah. Just to be close to you. Is my Sing it, yeah. Just to be close to you. 
Yeah, yeah. Just to Just be. to be close to you. Oh, what love we desire, yeah. Just, Just to, to be. be close to you. That's my only desire, yeah. your desire, give him a praise, give him a shout, give him a hand praise, speak to him, let him know how you feel. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship. Joy, my King, in what you hear, and let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Mm. I
for our hymn this morning. It's first Sunday, so as our custom, we do a uh, communion. So this, this song is in remembrance of what Jesus did.
As uh, Minister Darden comes to pray, I just want to give you a couple of prayer requests. Please pray for uh, Deacon Larry and his family as they traveled in Waterbury, Connecticut this morning, uh, this day, I should say, to have a memorial service for his uh, brother who passed away. So please pray for him. Uh, I want to con continue to pray for me. I actually, this is a, a prayer of Thanksgiving. Um, I talked about the storm early. I was on the phone with Deacon Larry on uh, Wednesday when we had the storm and a tree fell while we were on the phone in my backyard. And uh, so I just want to thank God for the tree not falling on my house, but I do uh, regret that the tree did fall and it hits my neighbor's garage. It didn't do, it shifted their house. I shouldn't say it didn't do any damage. It shifted the garage, so the garage is kind of leaning but it didn't do any other structural damage, but I guess they have to get it appraised. But I just thank God for not coming on my house or their house because it could have been worse. So I just Amen. praise God for that. I do know Mario shared with us yesterday that he lost a car in the storm. So we want to thank God that he wasn't in the car when, when the storm came. But we want to pray for all of those who have survived the storm. But please pray for Deacon Larry, traveling mercy as he, I see him a little Anyone else with a prayer request, praise report? We have much to be grateful for this morning, first part. Yes. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Prayer request, praise report. Aren't we glad that the, the blood? Yes. I'm sorry, Alex. Thank you. Anyone else? Don't be shy. It's wonderful that we are in the house of the Lord and we can see yeah. each other. We can feel each other. Yes, Mario Jr. I, I heard that you would like to pray for yourself for when you go to school and finish it. Say it louder for me. Take your mask off and say it louder. I would like to get good grades and a scholarship. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. Loud.
Thank you. We've all heard the prayers that came forth just now and from the mouth of Deacon Freddie, and they will be on the throne as we go to the Lord. Aren't we glad that the power, although the power might go out with PSCNG, <laughs> we might lose phone service, we might lose mattresses and furniture, but the power is in the blood of Jesus and that will never, yeah. ever be lost. <laughs> You, you know, church, driving to, to um, service today with Kayla and, and Jaden, I wish you could have heard the testimonies out of the mouths of babes. Kayla testified to the fact that the water on her street submerged cars right before her driveway. And she has video to show the waters right before her driveway. So there was no damage to their vehicles or their house. And I said, well, Jaden and Kayla, what do, you, what do you think that was? And Kayla said that she believed it was her mother because her mother prays. If we know Claudia, we know Claudia is intense and looks to the Lord and is not ashamed to verbalize where her trust is regardless of what the situation looks like and that her mother was praying and Jaden simply said, God. So our kids, I love the fact that you talk about it, that you ask for prayer, that you put friends and family up for prayer. First Park, we're doing something right. When our children, I know Pastor McClendon is so pleased because he, he put time and effort and prayer into the youth of First Park. Amen. First this morning, church, a word from the Lord, and I'll be reading from the New International Version, Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2, and it says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And now a word to the Lord. Heavenly Father, first and foremost, the First Park Baptist Church family just wants to say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for being God all by yourself. We thank you, God, for unmeasurable love, grace, mercy, comparable to none. We thank you, Lord, for keeping us safe through the storms of life. You never said that there would not be storms, but what you did tell us clearly is that you would be with us within the storm. And if we just focused on you and your unchangingness, your unchanging hand, that we too will come through the storm. We thank you, Lord, this morning for the gift of your son and our savior, Jesus Christ, and that because of him, and his sacrifice on the cross, we have eternal life with you. We thank you, Lord, for this church building and all of our members, whether they're in the building, Lord, are connecting with us through the use of technology. We thank you for those who make sure that this building is safe and runs well. Our board of trustees who toil long after the benediction to make sure that bills are paid and leaks are clogged up and painting is done. And we thank you for the custodial staff that keeps our, our building safe and, and sanitized. We pray this morning, Lord, for those that are sick, shut in, and just not with us in the building right now. We pray that they remain connected with us. We pray for the members that are here, that we reach out, that when a person crosses our mind that, yes, we will pray for them, but that we will also pick up the phone, send a text, or send an email. Sometimes, Lord, people just need to know that they're being thought about. Sometimes, Lord, we don't know the struggles that people are going through mentally, physically, or spiritually. But we do know, Lord, that the expectation is that we will take care of one another. And sometimes, again, Lord, that is simply through us picking up our phone and saying, hey, I love you. I miss you. I was thinking about you. Special prayer this morning, Lord, for our students who will be returning to school. 
for the first time, Lord, in over a year. We pray this morning, Lord, that they will be comforted by the fact that the Holy Spirit will be their guide. I pray this, Lord, I pray this morning, Lord, that they will be comforted by the fact that they walk with nine ingredients of life, which is all that they need to get through, that they will be mindful of the fruit of the spirit that we talk about on a weekly basis, that they will walk with love for their teachers, for their fellow classmates, and that they will be a comfort to those who might be lonely or scared. Lord, that they will walk with confidence knowing that you are God and that nothing will come to them that they cannot handle that they will focus, Lord, not only on their studies and their responsibilities at home and at school, but also focus on you, Lord. And Lord, that they will walk daily with not just a sense of who they are, but a sense of who they are in you. I pray also, Lord, for the teachers who too have been out of the building for over a year and as they get acclimated back to being in the classroom, that you will be with them and give them extra doses of, of patience and peace and understanding as they work with their fellow teachers and students returning after a long time away. We pray, Lord, this morning for those who are traveling, special prayer for our own Deacon Larry, who is going to uh, the memorial service. We pray that you be with not just him, but with his entire family as they spend time celebrating and remembering their brother, uncle, cousin. We ask that you return him safely to his First Park Church family. I pray this morning, Lord, for the one who will plant his feet in time and talk to, thing, talk to us about things eternal that you will give him the space that he needs to hear your voice, despite what he's prepared, that you may have something else for him to share with us. And I give all of us, I pray that we will all have uh, listening ears to hear what thus saith the Lord. On a personal note, Lord, I, I pray for caretakers, those who uh, tend to others. I thank you, Lord, uh, for my mother's life and, and that she is with me and that she is safe and that she has people that love her and take care of her. Lord, I pray for those who are older or just unable to take care of themselves and may not have that. And Lord, that you, if, if, if we are to help with that, that you put it in our heart and you put it in our mind to aid those who cannot take care of themselves. Lord, we thank you for everything that you do. We thank you for dwelling in the midst of this worship service. You heard the prayers of the saints, and we already in advance say thank you, Lord, for healings. Thank you, Lord, for finding a home for someone who may be homeless. We thank you, Lord, that trees fell in opposite directions of our home. We thank you, Lord, that maybe if we were stuck on the road Thursday night, that rescue came and helped us. We thank you, Lord, for our children, knees that heal, Lord. We thank you for the confidence that we know they will walk into the new school year with. These and all prayers, I say thank you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, amen. Good morning, church. It's that time again. I want to greet those who are on Facebook, YouTube, however you're coming to hear this service today. Uh, just thank you for checking in. And also, you know, to invite you that, you know, we would like to see your presence here at church. So if you feel in your heart to just come and be with us, 
in service, in person. I will be reading from Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 10. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be healthy to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with all your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Giving is not too much to, for, the, for the Lord to ask because he supplies our every needs. And all he asks from us is for us to give back 10%. And it's not just, it's, all, it's for the upkeep of his church and his, and his body. And not, just giving in tithes is not the only way you can give. There are other areas you can give of your time, your patience, you know, just calling somebody if you haven't seen them in a while in church. Those are things that you can do for the Lord. Now, we not in addition to tithes, we have um, other ministries that you can give to: the fish and loaves, prison ministry, and the missions ministry. So I just say that we should not count it robbery to give back to the Lord. Just this little bit that He asks because He gives us so much. So if the ushers would come. Excuse me, and everybody would come and pick up their communion as you put your donations in a basket. to give and for those who at this time may not have had the funds but just provide for them sometime in the future where they can give and again I want to thank you for watching over us all during this storm give an extra prayer for those who lost loved ones in this storm and for those they may have lost property but thank God they didn't lose their lives because property and possessions can be replaced but lives can't so I ask that you just watch over and protect your children and keep them safe. And for those that did lose things, let them get the assistance and the help they need to repair their houses or, their, or replace their cars. Uh, in Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. Praise the Lord. I just want to uh, share with you a little information about our uh, preacher this morning. His name is the Reverend David Clement. Uh, he's uh, the president of Have Mercy Ministries of Maplewood, New Jersey. He's also a resident of Maplewood, New Jersey. 
His lovely wife is with us this morning, Jackie. Jackie, you just raise your hand. Everybody can see her lovely face. They have three adult children and two grandchildren. Um, Reverend um, Clement, he was the associate pastor of First Baptist Church of South Orange. He was ordained in 2008. He has a Master of Divinity from New York Theological Seminary, and he was called to preach in 2002. He was licensed in 2004. So after our sermonic uh, message, uh, song we will hear, the next voice you will hear will be that of Reverend David Clement. I want everybody to put your hands together like this. This part of the service is called active participation. Come on, a little louder, a little louder. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Truth and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Come on, everybody. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they are all. Thank you, 
Jesus for blessing me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, amen. Let the church say amen. Blessings and glory and honor. Not some of it. Not a little bitty part of it. Come on, Brother Mario. It all. Do I have some help here this morning? It all belongs. Blessings and glory and honor. It all belongs to him. Because he's the one that keeps us. He's the reason that we're breathing right now. Amen. He is the one that put breath in our lungs. And so we can say hallelujah. Because God is that good. Amen. Amen. First giving honor to the almighty God. Amen. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost to is the head of my life. Amen. We just want to give him all reverence. Amen. To the leadership of this church. Amen. The deacons, the trustees, first lady. Amen. And to all of you, my father's children, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Amen and amen. Now, you might think that I don't know anything about First Park Baptist, but I was on the phone with Deacon Larry, and so one thing I know about First Park Baptist is that he likes to sing, and y'all like to sing, amen, and y'all back that up, amen, and, and he said that the deacons were going to treat me like family, and so between y'all liking to sing, and the deacons treating me like family. You know what they used to say when I was growing up? He ain't never lie. Amen. <laughs> amen and amen. Well, there is a word from the Lord this morning. Amen. Um, I was thinking about uh, the last time I was here uh, in Plainfield. And we, as we came up the, the street, I was telling my wife we were going to come to a stoplight. And I said, when you go to the left, the spot's going to be over there, the soul spot, amen, and so we come there every now and then, but there is a word from the Lord, amen? I'm going to ask that you go to Isaiah chapter 41, Isaiah chapter 41, amen, and amen, and I'm just, I'm just going to read one verse, Isaiah chapter 41, it's a verse I think that's pretty popular during this pandemic, amen. I'm going to read it, it's verse number 10. I'm going to read out of the King James Version. And this is how it reads. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee, with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. Amen. This is, how, this is how the message version says. It makes it kind of plain. It says, don't panic. Let me say that again. Don't panic. I'm with you. There's no need to fear for I'm your God. I'll give you strength. I'll help you. I'll hold you steady. Keep a firm grip on you. Amen. Amen. Don't fear. Don't panic. Can I tell you something? Don't sweat it. Don't sweat it because God's got it. Amen. Let us look to the Lord for a word of prayer. Gracious and eternal God, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we honor your most holy name. And Lord, we are appreciative. We're, we're glad that you've allowed us to come into your house one more time. Yes, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus, we give you all honor, glory, and praise. And ask, oh Lord, as we come 
that, Lord, you would indeed show up. That as we come, Lord, you would indeed give us a word from you. And so, Lord, I pray that you would cover me under the blood of Jesus. Yes, Lord, that you would hide me behind the cross, that not my words, but your words would be heard. Hear, O oh Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Please be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't sweat it. You know, because when we sweat, that's, that's not really the greatest feeling, is it? You know, when you, when, when you sweat, you know, the kids say you get kind of kind of icky. You know, we, we say you get kind of sticky. It's, it's not a good feeling when you sweat. You, you, you get your, your, you perspire and your, your clothes get all wet. And, and what happens is what you find is that, that you start carrying around a lot of extra weight when you sweat. You, when you sweat, you find that, that, that you might not be yourself because you, 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 you're under like a lot of tension. You're under a lot of stress. When you sweat it, then what you can find is sometimes you go home and, and you start fussing at the kids. When, when, when you sweat it, what you find out is, is you come home and, and you might have some issues with the dog or the cat or, or, or with your spouse. When you sweat it, you're just not always yourself because, because you're under a cloud. It said in the message version, don't panic. And that's what happens when you sweat it. Sweating it. Don't sweat it. Don't panic. Don't worry. Jesus tells us, don't worry. Can, can, I, can I put it this way? He says, don't sweat it. If, if, if you're sweating it, it doesn't add one hour to the span of your life. And so he, he, he says to us in the Sermon on the Mount, he says that look at the birds in the sky. They, they don't toil. They, they, they don't work. They don't sweat. Yet God takes care of them. Amen. He, he, he feeds them. Stop sweating and stop worrying about, about what you're going to eat. He says, don't worry about what you're going to wear. Can I get some help, somebody? He says, don't worry about the clothes that you're going to have to put on your back. He says, look at the lilies of the field. Look at how God clothes them. He says he closes them that, that Solomon in all his grandeur can't compare to what he does for the lilies of the field who, who are here one day and burned up the next day, yet how much more would he do for us? Remember, we are the crown of God's creation. He waited until the sixth day after the plants, after the water, after the sun, after the moon. He waited until the sixth day to create us. And so if he does all this for the birds, if he does all this for the lilies of the field, if he does all this for those who don't even praise him like you and I, how much more will he do for us? And so Jesus says, not exactly like this, but don't sweat it. There, there, there's too much going on. Don't, don't sweat it. But, but you know, the, life sometimes can be a workout. You know, we've been talking about the hurricane, the tornado. Right? The, the, the things can, can get on our mind. It's hard sometimes working as we work our way through life. I mean, we're going through the mist maybe for a year and a half now of, of the pandemic. Will it ever be over? And, and so even though we know we, we, we should trust in the Lord with all our heart, it's, it's not always easy. It's not the easiest thing to do. We, we tell ourselves, don't sweat it, but then we walk through the corridors of life and then we get to a door, we open it, and before we know it, we find ourselves sweating. But that's why I love Jesus, because no matter what we're going through, He's there. It's, it, it's, not, it's not always easy to go through life and not sweat. And that's what we find in our scripture this morning. The, the Israelites, they're, they're in the middle of being exiled. They, uh, some of them have been taken from their home. They're in captivity in Babylon with King Nebuchadnezzar. And so it's kind of hard right now. I, I can see them themselves asking themselves, Lord, 
I know you're a bad God, but, but, but is, is their God better than, better than you? Because we find ourselves in captivity. They're questioning this. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was young and I started mouthing off a little bit and somebody looked like they might get the best of me, I'd run to my big brother. And then my big brother would take care of it, but then that person would run to their big brother. And then their big brother would go up against my big brother, and if he got the best of my big brother, my brother went to my father. And, and if my father was there, if he handled it, then the other young guy went to his father. And so that's what's happening here. If, if you look at the context, the, the Israelites are saying, okay, wait a minute. We're in captivity. We went to our father. They went to their God. Amen. And now we find ourselves in chains. Amen. And so I can see, it wouldn't surprise me if they said, will we always be oppressed? Black people. Will, will we always be depressed? Will, will we ever be free? They're, they're in exile. They've been taken from their homes where they're comfortable to a foreign land where they're uncomfortable. I can see themselves saying, will, will we ever get back home? Will, will, will things ever get back to normal? Pandemic? Will I ever be able to go out my house and not think about a mask again? Will I ever be able to go out of my house and not think about booster shots? Will I ever be able to go out of my house? Come on, somebody, and be free. And so, so I can see themselves saying, are we ever going to get back to Jerusalem? Are we ever going to get back to the temple? Are we ever going to get back to worshiping the way we used to worship? Everyone coming to the church house, raising holy hands and saying, thank you, Jesus. Are we ever going to get back there? Well, God answers them in our scripture this morning. And what he tells them is, don't sweat it because I got it. And this, this is what he says. This is what he says right here. Amen. In the first part, as we break this down, in verse 41, he says, fear thou not, for I am with thee. So, so, so the first thing God does, God tells him, fear them, thou not, for I am with thee. And so he reminds them, he reminds us that we're not alone. That, that, that we don't have to sweat it because no matter what the circumstances, no matter what we might be going through, we're, 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 we're not alone. I, 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 I love Jesus because Jesus was willing to step out of eternity into time and, and, and clothe himself with humanity. And by doing that, we have a savior. We have a high priest who knows everything and understands everything that we go through. He, he understands what it's like to sweat. You see, we find him in the garden of Gethsemane and, 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 and the shadow the shadow of the cross is, is being cast on him. He knows that he has to walk up to Calvary. And, and, and he says to his disciples, y'all stay here. I'm going over here to pray. I, I'm distressed. I, I'm agitated. I'm grieved almost to the point of death. And so he goes on his own. And as they say, he falls on the ground. Y'all know what he does? He prays. And the reason he prays is because he understands that, that, that we are not alone. He understands that he is not alone. And if I can borrow Michael Jackson for just a minute, you are not alone. And so he goes to, to the Lord in prayer. He understands that, that he's not alone. He understands that, that the shadow of the cross is cast upon him. He's feeling weak in his humanity, but he understands that he is not alone, that God the Father is there. So he says, Abba, Father, if you can, if, if, if it's possible, Take this cup from me. Take this cup from me. Take this cross from me. Spare me of the pain. Spare me of the shame. 
Amen. But nevertheless, not my will, let your will be done. He understands that, that he's not alone. It says that he begins to sweat. Sweat comes off him like, like, like drops of blood. He's, he's praying so earnestly. But nevertheless, not my will, let your will be done. And, and let me tell you why he can do this. See, it says, it says here, fear not, for I am with you. Now, 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 can I put a little, I want to put just a little insertion in here because fear right here, uh, it kind of means like respect. It, be, it means to almost like be terrified. It, it, it means like to cower. It means to be in awe. So he's saying, do not be in awe. This, this is help us not to sweat. Do not be in awe of anything above the Lord. It's, right? The, the scripture says at the beginning of the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One. Amen. It's insight. Amen. So, so Jesus understands he, he's standing in the shadow of the cross. He, he, he's in awe. He, he, he's feeling grieved and distressed, but he understands that, that he's not alone. He's reminded he's not alone and that he has more awe of the father. He has more respect of the father. He, he has more ter terrified of the father. He has more confidence in the father than he does in, in the cross that stands before him. And so you and I, there, there, there's no need for us to sweat, amen, because we are not alone. God says in Deuteronomy, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave you nor forsake you, amen. And, and that's, that's good news. I will never leave you and forsake you, right? I like when it says, for I am with thee. In other words, because I am with thee. Do not fear because. How many of you know that God is the because? The beginning and the end, the first and the last. He's the because. He's be because of him is why we're here. Because of him is why we're breathing. Because of him, I can raise my hand. He's the because. He says, do not fear because, because I am with thee. So he reminds us. He reminds us that we are not alone. He reminds me that I'm not alone. And he reminds you that you're not alone. And so if you're not alone, there's no need to sweat. When, when, when you're walking and you're talking with the Lord and he's telling you I, that you are his own, amen. But, that, but that's, not, that, that's, not, that, that's not all he says. He says, be not dismayed for I am thy God. So, so he, he reminds us we're not alone. But then, then here he, he, he recites the covenant. So wait a minute, I, I, I don't see the Ten Commandments in here. But the, 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 the covenant here is here. He says, for I am thy God. He, he recites the covenant. And, and it all starts there. It all starts with acknowledging who God is. Amen. And then it follows with us acknowledging who we are. In other words, you're God up here and I'm me down here. But what I like about this is the possession. He says, I am thy God. See, not only do we belong to God, but when we make him our Lord and Savior, God belongs to us. And so that's the covenant. He, he recites the covenant for us. It says in Jeremiah 31, 33, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. That, that, that's the covenant. He, he recites the covenant. And when I was thinking about this, it reminded me of my oldest son. He's, he's in his 30s now, but he was, was talking to my wife about it around four. We estimated around four. 
And so there was, I don't know if it was Martin Luther King's birthday or uh, Black History Month, but he, he had, to, he had a, a, a part that was uh, kind of uh, snippets of different uh, sermons and or speeches by Martin Luther King Jr. And, and he had to recite this in front of like the parents and stuff like that. Now, one reason he had to recite it, y'all right, is that he was four, so he couldn't read. <laughs> Amen. So he had to he had to recite it. And I remember, I remember that my, that every day when he came home, my wife worked with him. Jackie went over this thing and it was about three minutes. And the reason I know is because it's on my phone. So it made me think about it. And I, my wife, she's the one that knows all the technology in our family. Somehow she sent it to my phone. But when she took it, over 30 years ago, <laughs> it was one of those cameras. You had to walk around like this, right? Everybody didn't have a phone, right? No, everybody didn't have a phone. They could just make a video and you got a battery and you know, you'd be lucky if that battery lasts. I don't know what, Deacon, two hours, an hour, something like that. But anyway, and so she took all that with him. But every day when he came home from school, she would go over this with him every day. You know what I noticed as, as, as she was teaching him what it was he had to learn? He, he, he never tried to add anything. He never, he, he never said, well, mommy, how come I can't say this? He, he, he never tried to add anything. Amen. But, but then the other thing I noticed was he never tried to take anything either. He never said, well, I don't see why I have to say that. He, he, he was reciting what, what his mother was teaching him to recite. It, it was the law as he knew it for that program. It was three minutes. She taught him, and, and he worked hard at it. And, and, and so if, if we want to recite the covenant, we got to do some work. But that's why we won't sweat. Let me tell you something. If you start to sweat, can, can I give you a little secret here? If you start feeling yourself sweating, just say, he is my God, and I belong to him. He, he belongs to me, and I belong to him. Now, you, you start there. Now, if you get down through the commandments, that's fine. But the, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. You know, he belongs to me, and I belong to him. Amen. And, and so as you're walking, you feel that you'll start to feel that sweat maybe just starts to go away. Like if you stepped in front of a fan or something like that. Amen. You start getting that cool air. Amen. And the thing is, when, when we say this covenant, it's, he, he, he says here in Jeremiah, I will, I, will, I will put my law within them, his law. You know what that means? We can't add anything. It's his law. It's his law. That, the covenant says, I will provide for you, just like I do the lilies of the field, just like I do the birds in the air but it's my law. You have to follow my, I'm going to put the law in you, but you can't change it. And guess what? Don't try adding anything up in here either. Receive it as I give it. Amen. And you know, when, when my son was learning this, this I guess, speech, and, and, and he had to learn, he had, you know what they used to call that? They said that he learned it by heart. And so he says that he puts his law in our hearts. We have to, we have to learn it by heart. We have to learn that, that, there, that, you know, the God of Israel is the only God. We have to love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We have to love our neighbors as ourselves. We have to know it in our hearts. We have to feel it. It can't just be words on a page. It can't just be something somebody told us. We, we have to know it as my grandmother would say. You have to know it for yourself. You have to know the laws for yourself. You have to know the precepts and the decrees for yourself. And it all starts with, I belong to him. I've accepted him as my Lord and Savior. And because of him, right, he belongs to me. He's, he, said, he says, do not be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Don't, don't sweat. Because what happens is dismayed here. Um, if you go to your concordance, can mean like gazing. It can mean like turning away. Y'all feel me? He says, do not be dismayed. In other words, 
don't turn away from me because when you turn away from me, you, 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 you're looking not at me, you're looking at the circumstance. You're looking at the challenge. You're looking at the problem. And so before we know it, we're gazing about and we've lost our focus. And now we're looking at the problem instead of the solution. And the solution is the covenant that when we go through something, we keep telling ourselves, I belong to him. And because I've accepted him as my Lord and Savior, he belongs to me. And I can walk around and I can say that with confidence. And this, this is the last thing that we're going to get out of here. This is what it says in the last part. In the last part, it says, I will strengthen thee, yea, I will, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. And so he, he reminds us, he reminds us, he reminds us, he reminds us that we're not alone. But then he recites, he recites the covenant for us so that we get it. But then this is the last thing he does is, it's not only does he remind and recite, but then he, he refills or rebuilds our confidence. Because sometimes, well, let me speak for myself. I, I can lose confidence. I would like to think that, you know, I have on the whole body, the whole armor of God. That doesn't mean that there's not in some creases or spaces. I found that out of my bedroom in my bas basement the other day that that water was coming up from the bottom. It wasn't coming through the through the floor. It was coming up through the bottom. So I found out that 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 underneath my floor, there were some cracks where, where, where the water could kind of seep through. And so sometimes I lose confidence. It's not that I don't believe, but sometimes doubt kind of slithers in it. It, it seeps in. It seeps. It looks for those cracks. And before we know it, we, we're starting to lose confidence. But, but Proverbs says, for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. And, and, and the image I, I got in my head was like one of those bear traps. You know, you're walking along and then click, click. And now that this claw thing is, is y'all know what I'm talking about? This claw thing is around my leg. In other words, he will, your foot, foot won't be caught. You won't be trapped. He will keep you from being trapped. And so we know that if we feel enclosed by the pandemic, if we feel enclosed by some sort of circumstances, as my pastor would say, the month is more than the money. We know that we're not going to be caught there, that it's only a temporary circumstance, that, that, that our treasure doesn't lay here, it lays in heaven, amen. And so he says that the Lord will be our confidence and he will keep your foot from being caught. And so this, and then I'm out of here, is how he rebuilds our confidence. He says, I will strengthen thee. God strengthens, right? Psalm 46, one says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And I love that. I love that God's our refuge and strength. Amen. And when we think about refuge, they're talking about Afghanistan now and how many refugees were coming over and others. People are coming over to try to find refuge because of what's going on in their homeless. And they're coming over here because so much confusion, so much chaos, uh, so much violence going on where they are. They want to come over here. Amen. And so they want to find refuge. They, they, they want to be restored. But you know more than that with refuge is you find peace. And so in God's strength, I love that he says, God is our refuge and strength. God gives us the total package. God is our peace and our strength. Amen. So why are we sweating then? God is our peace and our strength. And so, you know, uh, maybe two weeks ago or so, I was playing golf. And it was one of those days. It was like 90 something. I don't know if it was 95, but it was 90 something. Well, let me, let me put it easy. It's like, it was hot. Yeah. Amen. And so, you know, we started we, we, with a group of guys. We started playing golf. And so started out 9, 930 in the morning. Crack. Like right down the middle. Crack. Right up on the green, which is where you do your putting. Get out. By around 12 o'clock. 
Can I tell you, did I tell y'all it was hot? Well, at 12, it was hotter. And, and, and what I found was that <laughs> as it got hotter, I started to sweat. And so now I felt my body getting kind of weary. And, and, and I was losing confidence. You know why? Because, because I was dependent on my own strength. And so I started losing confidence. As I lose confidence, I hit, the ball went way over there. I hit, the next one went way over there. <laughs> then I hit, I would have missed the whole thing, but I got touched it by that much. And it went right to me to about where first lady is. I hit one, it went straight up in the air because I had lost my confidence. But then right around 1230, or a little bit of whenever, a guy came around on a cart. And in that cart, he had some Gatorade. I was like, yes. And so I took that Gatorade, amen, and I started to drink it, and I started to feel better now. Now, I got my confidence back, y'all, but I never did get that swing back. You know, it was still like curving this way, curving. I never got this, but I had my confidence back. See, and sometimes, you know, I got rehydrated. I got refilled. Sometimes we can get dehydrated spiritually. And, and, but, but we're lucky because we have more than Gatorade. We have power aid. We, we have God aid. Amen. And so when we are feeling spiritually dehydrated, amen, all we have to do is look unto the Lord. Amen. He said that, that when my alarm rang, I thought that you had put me on the side, yet you heard me in your mercy when I called out to you. And so we want to remember that, that he will strengthen us, but then he says, I will help thee. John uh, 15, 7 says, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will and it shall be yes, given unto you. He will help. But you know what it says, if you abide in me. In other words, we, we got to be living in him though. Right? We can't have, have him in a box over here. And this is Jesus speaking. We can't have him in a box over here and walking around. And then, you know, like I dream a dream, genie, we run over here now. Now we start rubbing this and saying, no, 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 no. He says that you have to abide in me. He said, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, and that will keep us from sweating. Devil starts knocking on your door. Get, get thee behind me, Satan. World starts getting the best of you. Say, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I don't care how hard this workout is getting. I don't care what's going on in my relationship. Well, I care, but no matter what's going on in my relationships, no matter what's going on at work, no matter what's going on in life, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And so he will strengthen us. He will help us. And this is it right here. He says, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness the power hand, the right hand, the righteousness. When Jesus told us, don't worry, what he told us was seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, provision will be made for you. Just cut to the chase. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and provision will be there for you from me. He says, I will uphold thee. I like this. The psalm, psalm says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delights in his way. And if God is delighting in our way, we're delighting in our way. That means we're not sweating. Amen. And so it goes on. It says, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand with his right hand, with the hand of his righteousness. And I like that it ends here because when he talks about the, the hand, right hand of his righteousness, it lets us know that, that when we fall, 
there could be a moral issue. When we fall, there's a spiritual issue. Yet, he picks us up. When he stumbles, he catches us before we even fall. But it says we won't be utterly cast down. In other words, we might be laying there on the ground, y'all, trying to block the punches from the enemy. But it says we're not going to be utterly cast down. That means we're not going to be there forever because God with his power hand, his right hand, God with his hand, right hand of righteousness will pick us up. And so this isn't a time to sweat. This is a time to keep our cool. And we keep our cool by keep praying. We keep our cool by keep praising. We keep our cool by keep worshiping. And if we lift up the name of Jesus, we'll be cool because we'll be saying thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for keeping me. We'll be so busy praying, we won't have time to sweat because we'll be in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me. Thank you, Lord, for, for, for going and hanging on that old rugged cross. And because you hung on that old rugged cross, we can say to ourselves, don't sweat it. God's got it. Don't sweat it. God says, I got this. Don't sweat it. I got you. You're in my hand. You're not alone. Remember and recite the covenant and I will be there to refill your confidence. Amen. Come on, let's give God a praise. Amen. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Oh, amen. Amen. And amen. God is so good. Amen. You know, I would be remiss to come and stand behind this sacred desk as we all stand. If we did not have the invitation to discipleship or rededication of faith. And so I don't know for deacons, if you want us as you come forward, amen, to receive someone who may come. God says, to us through life over and over again. I got this. And so there's no need for us to sweat it. And you might be finding that you're spending more time sweating than you care to admit. That you spend more time carrying around the weight of the world when you don't have to. And so if there's someone here this morning and you would like to give your life to Christ, then we would like to invite you to come forward right now. The Lord says, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hear my voice and open up the door, I will come into him and eat with him. And so you see that you realize the Holy Spirit is moving in you and telling you it's time for you to have a meal with the master. And I want to invite you to come forward at this time. This is someone this morning. Amen. Well, I have a second invitation for you, and this is that you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, but somehow, some way, no passing judgment that you, you just kind of got away. You, you lost some confidence. And now the Lord is telling you, come forward and rededicate your life. If that's you, then come forward. Thank you, my brother. God bless you. Amen. If that's you, then come forward at this time. Amen. The deacons are here waiting for you with open arms. Amen. 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 Bless you, Lord. Bless you. Amen. 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 Is there someone else? Is there someone else? Amen. You don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Come. You know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you want to rededicate your life. Amen. Then come. Is there one? Is there someone? Can you believe? Amen. 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 You've done What's your name, my brother? James. You turn around. This is brother James. Amen. 
you come to rededicate your life to Christ. Is that right? Oh, so, like, I, I have it. Okay. I'm not this case. Okay. Okay. Well, let's have prayer. Amen. He, you, you're the need of encouragement. Amen. You got to come to the Lord for that. Let us let us look to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and eternal God, Lord, we we say thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit moving in James and having him come forth to, to shine in only the light that you can give. And so we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, but what you will do for those of us, Lord, who give ourselves over to you. And so, Lord, I pray. I pray that in this moment, in this time, oh God, that, that you would continue to move in James, that you would let him know he's, there's no need to sweat, that he's not alone. Yes, Lord, that, that he might feel as if death is surrounding him, but Lord, what he feels right now is your loving arms around him that, that has pulled him up to the altar to remind him that he is not alone, that all he has to say is, Lord, be thou mine. That I know you have been raised from the dead, Jesus. And that I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that you are Lord and that you are with me and that nothing can come through you to me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so we thank you, Lord, for moving in this way. Yes, Lord, and Lord, as, as James has confessed that he has a challenge, can't even really get out the words of what was bothering him, Lord. We know that you know. And that's why you moved in him to come forward today. And Lord, we are convinced, we are confident that, Lord, he is indeed saved in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray, giving you all honor and glory. Amen and amen, amen. Come on, let's give God a praise, amen. Amen, amen. I don't you should take information or you want to, amen. Okay, okay. Amen, amen. Come on, let's give God a praise, amen. Oh, God is good, amen, amen. Makes you want to shout. Oh, amen, amen. Forgive me, amen, but I just, I just feel the spirit right now. Oh, amen. Amen. I'm going to ask that you uh, be seated or, do, or well, ask that you be seated. We're going to have the reading of the church covenant as we move into a communion for this first Sunday. Amen. Uh, after that, I'm going to uh, read some scripture and then we're going to ask the deacons to uh, bless the elements of the table. Amen. Amen. First of all, we want to thank Reverend Clement for coming this morning and sharing that word of encouragement. Truly was a blessing to me, and I hope it was a blessing to you as well. We all need to be encouraged. We now need to know that God's got it, no matter what we're going through. He got us. But we got to hold on to his word as he reminded us. We got to put it in our hearts and remember to quote scripture when you're going through stuff. You know, say his word back to him. Challenge him. He don't mind if you challenge him. Challenge him with his word. And I'm sure he'll honor his blessings as he's promised to us. I'm going to read our church covenant. I'm, I'm not sure if it's on the screen. I see church covenant there, but I don't see. Oh, okay, here we go. And if you stand and we'll read it together. And it goes. Having been led by the Spirit of God to receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and to give ourselves holy and gladly to him as Lord of our lives, we solemnly and joyfully covenant with one another to walk together in Christian love. Trusting in his all-sufficient grace, we agree to exercise an affectionate care and watchfulness toward one another, faithfully admonishing and entreating as occasion may require, bearing one another's burdens and sharing one another's joy, 
to maintain the habit of secret and family devotion, to endeavor to bring up our children and those under our care in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And as opportunity may present itself to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, we further engage to walk carefully before the world, refraining from all practices that will be harmful to our own Christian life or injurious to others, and which would in any way bring reproach upon the name of our Lord and his church. We promise that we will earnestly seek to promote the welfare and growth of the church by faithful attendance upon the services of God's house and by contributing according as God shall prosper us toward the help of the needy and the proclamation of the gospel at home and unto the uttermost parts of the earth and that throughout life amidst evil report and good report we will humbly and earnestly seek to live in the glory of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. And when the saints came together for communion, as we do today, amen, they, they came as, a, as a, a family. And it didn't matter if you had a lot or you had a little. They would come and they would contribute to the feast. And some brought nothing, but all were welcome, amen, to share as we are today in the remembrance of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and all that he did for us, amen. I'm going to read out of 1 Corinthians to King James starting at the 23rd verse and I'm going to read down through verse 26 it says for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he break it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask the deacons to come forth and bless the elements of the table. is the flow. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the ultimate sacrifice that you made. Your blood was shed so that we can have a relationship with you. And we just thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Has there been anyone omitted? Are you good? Let us commune together.
Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and eternal God, Lord, we, we just thank you for the blood. We thank you, O oh God, for putting on our clothes, the clothing of flesh, that our sin might be covered. Oh Lord, we, we thank you for, for this worship service and for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. For we know, oh Lord, without you, it's just empty. But because of you, it has been full. And so Lord, now as we think, as we reflect on your goodness, oh Lord, we reflect on your, on your patience and your kindness. Yes, Lord, we, we reflect on your power. We say thank you for being so good. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with, with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, dominion, might, and power both now and forevermore. And the people of God said amen, amen, amen. God bless you, amen. Go in peace. Enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. Amen. Let's all just praise the Lord. God bless you. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church.